With the success of our pediatric liver transplant program, there is an ever-increasing demand for organs. We have patients that die on our waiting lists and we've had to look at alternative ways of providing organs for these patients. This led to the development of our pediatric living donor liver transplant program. The context around HIV and the history of HIV and organ transplantation was started uh, in Cape Town when HIV positive organs were transplanted into HIV positive recipients. Simultaneously, South Africa has the largest antiretroviral program and is an enormous success, which means that we have a growing population of uh, young people living with HIV and who have children who develop diseases like anybody else that require transplantation. We've been pushed by families to utilize or offer them living donor liver transplantation for their children who are uninfected and resulted in us doing this first transplant uh, from an HIV infected mom to her HIV negative child. In this particular transplant, it's important to remember that we were looking at life and death decisions, so the stakes were really high. The kind of things we were looking at was making sure that the mum's autonomy was protected and we did that by enlisting the services of what we call an independent donor advocate somebody who can look out and support a parent throughout this process. We were also faced with things like the risk to this child and having a child who was too young to be able to tell us whether they were willing to assume that risk. Going forward one of our main ethical dilemmas now is that we don't know the HIV status of our child. I guess in this case the HIV is sort of like a bad ninja. It might be hiding somewhere in the child, but top experts can't necessarily find it. And we have to work out how we communicate that risk to parents going forward and make sure that they're aware of the uncertainties in this case. Before transplantation, drugs were given as pre-exposure prophylaxis the evening before uh, transplantation, and then the child has remained on treatment subsequently and is to date. About 43 days after the transplantation, we saw a seroconversion event. And what that means is that the child became HIV positive. But on monitoring the HIV antibodies subsequently, this has continually waned, basically to becoming almost negative. When we looked for actual evidence of virus, any measures of the virus load in the blood of the child has remained undetectable throughout and every time we've tested to date. Also, when we look at the cells of the child, and we've tried to do this with very sensitive methods, we cannot detect any virus or traces of virus within the cells of the child. We will continue to monitor the child over time to ensure the status, but we need to have a lot more understanding of the interaction of the virus and the host in this particular context to get a better understanding of the actual risk for transmission itself. I think for all of us the most wonderful thing about this program is that it's for everyone. So any child in South Africa who needs a liver transplant can have one at Witz Donald Gordon Medical Centre. So Witz Donald Gordon is a private academic teaching hospital and the income generated from the hospital is used for programs such as this and also to ensure that we can train our specialists going forward to expand the program.